Former CIA operative, investigator, and author, Ben Smith has been intrigued by Roswell and UFOs for years. Investigating was at the core of my work at CIA. I went under deep cover, lived a double life to collect intel on terrorist networks, foreign spy activities, even weapons of mass destruction. Smith says this may be his most challenging mission, trying to figure out the truth about what really crashed near Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. During his investigation, Smith will work with Joe Papalardo, a veteran journalist who specializes in aviation. My investigation really starts from this man here, Jesse Marcel Sr., the chief of intelligence at the 509th Bomber Group at Roswell Army Air Force Base. Jesse Marcel Sr. kept a small army portfolio of his military records and in it, a small journal. Jesse Marcel, the man at the center of the claim that Roswell was a cover-up, kept this journal among his most important papers. Obviously, it was very valuable to him. The question is, is it a key to my investigation? Some of the dates described in the journal capture 1947. It's a remarkable piece of history, and nobody really knows about it yet. You're right to be excited. If this is real, if this is an actual journal from that time, it would represent a primary source document from that era. So that's the thing that you want to go after as a researcher. I would like to take a look at what you got to see a little bit more about this diary. Let me actually bring it up on the projector here. This is the notebook here. Right away, I see a typical uh, Army field issue notebook. So here we have a date, 1946. This entire journal comes from when he was at Roswell. Correct. Our date here, we have August 31st, 1947, about six weeks, seven weeks after the US Army Corps put out their infamous UFO crash at Roswell, flying disc. There's a beautiful cursive handwriting. And then if we fast forward, shift hmm. to this kind of erratic, mixed case, blocky, lettering, and I can't make sense of it. A Couple of things leap to mind immediately when you see a change that's this drastic. It's impossible not to notice that it's, that it's different. It's either a different person writing it or it's a same person in different mindset. Is that by design or is that just unintentional? The content seems the same. How does the journal compare with the timeline of the incident? Well, there's, there's no mention of, of Roswell at all, no mention of any events, no mention of any wreckage. It's just these jokes and quotes and musings and ideas captured in different handwriting. And there's only sporadic dates. They read like quotes from Reader's Digest. Life is what you make it until someone comes along and changes it. Two half-brothers make one. Well, now that I am too old to set a bad example, I delight in giving good advice. So it meant something to him, but no one knows what. Yeah. He's a soldier. He was in charge of intelligence at the 509th. He, he knew a lot of secrets. He took them very seriously. It's kind of hard to imagine the seriousness that people back then took secrecy and took nuclear secrecy uh -huh. and, and nuclear weapons in particular. I mean, there were hordes of Soviet spies trying to get this information at the time. In 1947, the United States and the Soviet Union were already Cold War enemies. The US possessed nuclear weapons while the Soviets did not. Major Jesse Marcel and his colleagues in the 509th Bomber Squadron wanted to keep it that way. They were basically the only nuclear bombing group in the world. He was entrusted with the biggest secrets that the military has. One thing that the, the Marcel children insist on is that their grandfather was absolutely certain that the debris that he was holding in this photo right here, the official government photos and the press release, is not the debris that he found in the field. I see my grandfather holding up something that he knew that wasn't what he found. He was adamant that this was not what he saw in the debris field. I see a man that is not liking what they're having him do, but he knows he has to do it because that's his job. That's not what he found. 
And at that point in time, I'm sure he kind of felt, well, maybe I'm going to be made out to be a fall guy. Keeping a secret is one thing, but telling a lie is another. And being the face of that lie in the newspaper could break a man like Jesse Marcel. Well, that could explain the difference in the journal as well. Someone under that much stress, who knows how that manifests. It's different handwriting because in a different mental state. What made the writing so cryptic? And why did it suddenly change? Did it have to do with the UFO or its passengers? OK, so you've got this hot piece of evidence in your hands. How do you plan on verifying that it's real? I think the first step is to authenticate the document itself. Is this dated to the time period, or is this a recreation? If we can ex exclude the fact that it's a forgery, then we're winning. Do the forensics first to make sure that it's actually of the era. Yeah. Another interesting question, why did he have it? Why was it so important to him that he kept it and left it among his things to pass on to his children? And then the third tier is trying to figure out what the hell it says. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you weren't cut out for you in this right. one. 